in this lesson, we're going to talk about query plans. By the end of this lesson, you should be familiar with what query plans are, how the query optimizer works with them, and how they're cached. Let's go ahead and talk about what a query plan is. I think the best way to illustrate this is with an example. When a query comes into the database, a query plan is formed, which is a series of stages that feed into one another. So in the case of this query for this given index, we'd expect the query plan to look like this. Since we have an index on zip code and cuisine, we're able to fetch the record IDs of the documents that meet our query predicate. From there, those record IDs are passed up to the fetch stage. This is where the storage engine is going to convert the record IDs into documents. And then those documents are then passed up to the sort stage where an in-memory sort will be performed on them. This is the only reasonable query plan for this query on this index. But for a given query, we can have many different query plans based on what indexes are available. So if we had an index like this on cuisine and stars, this could prevent an in-memory sort. So we'd have a query plan like this. Here we do an index scan where we fetch the record IDs of our documents in sort order. We then pass this up to the fetch stage where they're converted into documents and then returned. So the available indexes will determine what possible query plans we can use to satisfy our query. Now that we know what a query plan is, let's talk a little bit about how they're chosen. When a fresh query comes into the database for the first time, the server is going to look at all of the available indexes on the collection. From there, it will identify which indexes are viable to satisfy the query. We call these candidate indexes. From these candidate indexes, the query optimizer can generate candidate plans. Now, MongoDB has what is called an empirical query planner, which means that there's going to be a trial period where each of the candidate plans is executed over a short period of time. And the planner will then see which plan performed best. I don't want to get too into the weeds here, but best can be which plan returned all the results first, or it might be which returned a certain number of documents in sort order fastest. There's a lot of different ways we can describe best, and the query optimizer will do it in different ways depending on the query. And so for this run, this is the winning plan. If we were to run explain and look under the winning plan field, this is the plan I'd be talking about. And so these other plans would fall under the rejected plans field. Now, it wouldn't make much sense to run a trial run for every query that came into the database. We're going to have a lot of queries that are going to have the same shape and would benefit from the same query plans. Because of this, MongoDB caches which plan it should use for a given query shape. Now, over time, our collection is going to change, and so might our indexes. What this means is, under different conditions, the plan cache will evict a plan. This can happen if the server is restarted, or if the amount of work performed by the first portion of the query exceeds the amount of work performed by the winning plan by a factor of 10. Plans are also evicted when indexes are rebuilt, or if an index is created or dropped. And that should give you a good overview of query plans. Let's recap what we've learned. We've spent some time talking about what query plans are. We also discussed how the query optimizer works and how it determines which plan is best. And we also discussed query plan caching so that we're not running trial periods for every query that comes into the database.